Welcome back to my channel. I'm Chang. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake. In this video, I would like to say thank you so much for all of your guys' support. <laughs> Someone we know just got 10,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Hobo Ventures. <laughs> I would like to say thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. This has really been a dream come true. And I hope I'm able to provide a value to your life because you provide value to mine. And really thank you so much everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in this video also we pick out like 10 questions that the subscriber they usually a common ask yeah <laughs> so we'll, we're gonna celebrate her 10,000 by answering 10 of your questions <laughs> first we start with um what is dan channel and what is my channel Can yeah my, my channel i i um i've been traveling around the world since uh 15 years and going to different countries and looking at what the cost of living are in countries and what kind of life you can have for that kind of money and I do those kinds of reports and videos and I'm sure you've seen them and uh, and so mine are kind of a broad overview and Chung's channel is more about it's more about food and it's more about like a nice place that we've been traveling with a cheap and a budget price yeah. and I'm more about the food I would like small thing I would like describe that how good is it or you know where you can get it and all this she's a foodie <laughs> and you wouldn't know it because she's so skinny but she eats more food than I do so. mostly food but I also do some traveling yeah. and the next is um, we should brief like how we met you know people so asking that yeah. So I, I was in uh, Malaysia and I put up my profile on Tinder <laughs> and I swiped right on a beautiful woman and about a month later she swiped right on mine and we... Uh, with a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we went out and met that night and uh, we've been hanging out ever since. Uh, for a year I would come back to Malaysia and visit and then after about a year uh, we Chung quit her job and life and joined me and she's been traveling. Yeah, so my car so me. did and so that. Well, if you want to know more about how we met, click, click the link above so you will know that how we met, all those details. The long story. <laughs> the long story. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's we go into that 10 questions. The first is how, what? <laughs> how tall is Chung? How tall is Chung? Yeah, Chung's six foot tall. Yeah. An I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you call that is uh, 182 cm. I'm that tall. Centimeters, yeah. Centimeters, sorry. That's the rest of the world. <laughs> 182 centimeter or six feet tall. Yeah. So she's taller than me. I, I At one point, I almost got to six feet. Now I've shrunk a little. I'm probably only <laughs> five, ten and a half. So she's a good half inch taller than me. Maybe a whole inch. The second question is... A Qianghui nationality. Oh yeah, where are you from? <laughs> you should say that you met, you I met her in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and she's a Malaysian. Yes, I'm Malaysian. So I'm <laughs> when we when I in the uh, Philippines or other place, and people keep asking me that am I from Korea, uh, Japan, China, of China, Taiwan. You yeah, know? because she there's three ethnic groups in Malaysia. There's Indians, there's what they call Malay, yeah. and there's Chinese, and yeah. Chung's an ethnic Chinese Malaysian. Yeah, but even in Malaysia, they also think I'm from China. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're very tall. I don't think I've... I, you're probably the tallest Chinese woman I've seen in Malaysia. Well... Maybe. Not really, because you've been to my uh, modeling uh, show, yeah, fashion show in yeah, Malaysia, and yeah. you see the other tall Chinese But well, you're lady. the tallest. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of the tallest. <laughs> there's some 5 foot niners and even 5 foot tenors, but there's no other 6 footers that I know of. So. Yeah, so before that, um, before I met dance, I was a runway model, and I do like a runway fashion show, shooting, commercial, catalog, yeah. Yeah, she still does some of that when we when we're back in Malaysia. She's done three or four shows. They uh, people her friends invite her back because she's a lot of fun to have on stage. <laughs> but it's not not that much now because I not really go back to my country. Well, you've been out of time. the country for <laughs> three or four years. So. <laughs> yeah, but I believe that this time if I go back, I will have a shooting waiting for me. They are waiting when when Chiang you are coming back. <laughs> I coming back soon. The third question is, 
vegetarians. Then, are you vegetarian? Yeah. So, so the definition of vegetarian is not the same all over the world. It's not unusual for me to tell somebody I'm a vegetarian, and they say, "Do you eat chicken or fish、yes. or this kind of thing?" I'm a vegetarian. I'm lacto ovo. Lacto means milk. Ovo means egg. I guess they're Latin words. So I eat vegetables, rice, grains, everything, but、um, uh, but fish, chicken, beef, anything. If it runs, walks, or swims away, or fly, or flies away, yeah, I don't, I don't eat it. So, but I do eat cheese and I eat eggs. Ah, so.、Uh, so you don't eat chicken, huh? No, it flies. Well, maybe they don't fly. I don't know.、Uh, so always... you don't eat seafood, right? I don't know. Does it swim? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't eat seafood. <laughs> I just make a joke <laughs> because、uh, when we traveling and、uh, in Latin America or some part of the world,、uh, when you tell them、uh, you are vegetarians, they will say, "Do you eat chicken?" So、yeah. apparently, chicken is not in the you know meat category. It's in no, the vegetarian、no. <laughs> vegetarian category. <laughs> <laughs> How we travel to so many country because now the、uh, rules is changing. They always asking for the overflight or、yeah. return ticket. Yeah,、um, especially during the、uh, the coronavirus, we've、yes. been to nine countries since the breakout. Yes, and more often the the、uh, immigration officials follow the rules,、mm -hmm. and so they start asking for things that they haven't asked for in years. Not in every country. Yes. But an onward flight is a typical thing that people ask for. Not in every country, but、yeah. it happens quite often. So, so, and we always talk about how we buy one-way tickets. Well,、mm -hmm. if you're buying a one-way ticket, how do you have a yeah, return flight or、yeah. an onward flight?、Uh, and the way we do that is, we go to topoverticket.com and purchase a ticket. They,、uh, they will reserve the ticket for forty eight hours. So in your name, under your name. So if the airline ticket they check is definitely have your name over there that you reserve the ticket. So it's not just a piece of paper with your name on it.、Yeah. It's a real short term reservation. They call it a reservation rental. Yes. And they give you a printout, and you just buy it. Like twelve dollar. Yeah, for twelve bucks, and、uh, you bring it to the immigrate、uh, the、um, check in counter、yeah. uh, when you're boarding,、mm -hmm. and then you might be asked for it again. Not always, but at immigration. Yeah. And so try to have it active during the forty eight hours when you board and when you land and go through immigration. Yeah. We usually buy it a night before, and we will get the confirmations reservations in about. Like one hour, five actually it's ten minutes to one hour. You will get a confirmation,、yeah. and they have a live chat or in the website, so you、yeah. can say, "I rush, I need a ticket." You will get it right away. Go to the airport、uh, three hours early, or maybe even four, and try to board. If you get refused, which hasn't happened very、yeah. often, only one time. Yeah.、Uh, because they, when we were in the Dominican Republic trying to go to Panama, the 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 flight、Panama. person when we were trying to board said, "Sir, this isn't a paid for reservation.、Yes. It has to be paid for." We'd never heard that anywhere in the world before. Yeah. But for, but so we were quickly went to the side and, and we bought a real ticket. A real and, ticket. And that, paid for it. That can be cancelled.、Uh, be within the twenty-four <laughs> hour, you will get a full refund.、Yeah. But this only happened in Panama because I see on other group they say Panama they started to they need a real ticket to do、yeah. that. But the rest of the world we、yeah. still using the top on world ticket the reservation. Right. Okay. The point is get to the airport in time so you have make up a backup strategy. How we move around the city or between the city? Um, we generally, the world is depends. Public transportation varies around the world.、Mm -hmm. We generally try to take a jet into a country, or, or the first country on a continent,、mm -hmm. and then once we're on that continent, we try to move on the ground、mm -hmm. because it's cheaper. Instead of a hundred or two hundred, you're buying a thirty or forty dollar train ticket or a minivan or whatever. So, our whole motto is to you know travel the world for cheaper, and so we travel on land. Often、buses and trains. Yeah, buses, train, minivans, those cheap boats, ferries. Boats. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Like、yeah. in the Philippines where we are yeah. now. Yeah, if we can. Ferries. Sorry, if we can close the border like between Thailand to Cambodia or Thailand to Malaysia, we often to use the train or the bus to cross the border, which is it cheaper by the flight sometimes. Right. But you have to be aware. There sometimes you have to fly. Like I think you have to fly, or you did. I haven't checked lately.、Yes. 
recently you had to start flying into Thailand because oh. they would only give you a couple of weeks if you came across the border That's crossing true. or they would give you a full month that you could extend one month if you flew in so you have to ch check that kind of stuff yeah the rules changing all the time I cannot right. give you the latest information because while you fly or while we travel you need to be checked about the whatever the rules are yes. yeah so what you want to do uh, is, in general is just think about traveling ground because it's cheaper mm -hmm. and it's more fun you get to actually see the country you're in rather than fly over it and just see an airport um, but do check and make sure there's any uh, there's no negative consequences how we find our accommodation I have a whole report on that uh, just click below this video and you'll see you'll see the link to that it's called how to find perfect apartments around the world um, but the main idea is um, that you the longer you rent an apartment the lower the rate is like mm -hmm. if you're going somewhere for a month it's often a 30 or 40 percent discount whereas yeah. versus if you rent for a night or two yes but the problem is if you're like us and you want to have really strong internet you don't really often know until you get on the ground mm -hmm. whether or not the internet's very good by the way this is all in the report um, so what you do often is just book the first few days and then once you're on the ground you hoof around find a place you really like you test the internet and then book with them for a few weeks or months yeah so most of the time i will check in airbnb booking.com agoda or a facebook group the aspect group on the place that i want to go and i will throw the questions and they have a lot of the accommodation but i will not book direct online with them i will go there on the ground and i will go to uh, check the apartments before yeah. i want to book or anything for safety and chung mentioned facebook groups for expats so go to facebook the name of the city you're going to with the word expat in facebook and if, if there is an expat group there for that city or that part of the country you can start asking other expat yes questions like that the next question is what is slow travel what is slow travel okay so um some people just move to a country like mm -hmm. my my niche is my web page and what I teach is how to retire cheap in paradise some people just pick a place and move there like a lot of people move to Dumaguete in the Philippines other parts of Mexico or, or Vietnam or Thailand um, but if you're like Chung and I we like a little bit of variety in our mm -hmm. in our life so we travel around the world but traveling around the world can be very expensive if you just fly here for a week fly there for a week fly here for a week so we don't do that we do what's called slow travel we fly to some part of the world some continent and then while we're in that continent we slowly travel from city to city often spending weeks or a month in each place that we're interested in yes. in that whole continent before we buy another ticket and fly to another part of the world so it might be six months or a year that you spend slow traveling around a part of the world before you go somewhere else example you, right now that we are in Philippines almost for six months yeah it's six months uh, almost six months and so we save a lot of money because we stay in each place a little longer yes in the country longer how many countries that have you been uh, I've been to 67 countries. Wow, I've been to 31 country, 11 country before I met Dan. You mean I, you weren't? I didn't drag you out of a tree and take you to your first country? I traveled by myself to uh, <laughs> Italy uh, and Turkey and Iran and uh, South Korea with uh, also because I was doing modeling job, so that's why I have a chance to be traveling. 11 countries? Uh, yes. Very fancy smancy. <laughs> How we travel without speak? A local language yeah <laughs> as you probably know I speak English <laughs> as you probably know that I speak English I speak my country uh, language which is Malay and I speak Chinese I speak Persian which is the uh, Iranian language no yeah. Arabic language yeah yeah so and I understand a little bit in uh, Spanish because yeah. uh, we was in Latin America for very long like a few years you know over yeah. there and I took the call so I can have a uh, normal conversation we can bargain the price <laughs> yeah. yeah I know a little bit of Spanish too so that's, I get, and a little French so yeah and so um, but what do we do when we end up somewhere and we, ha we have to have a con a um, uh, complicated conversation yeah. we use Google Translate that is a very typical thing that I remember is when we in Vietnam because that language which is I couldn't understand at all. So have no choice. We have to use Google Translate. But Google Translate is not 100% true. But you will get about like 
fifty percent meaning over there, yeah. so it's easier. A little better than fifty, I would say. Okay. But the thing is, there's different apps they use around the world to text. Yeah. Not many people have conversations anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you're, for example, on WhatsApp, one of the largest, and you text somebody a question, but you're in Vietnam, you need to text them Vietnamese. So yeah. you, so you open up your Google Translate, you put in the English words, it gives you the the Vietnamese. Yeah. You paste that into WhatsApp and you send them a, a Vietnamese set, uh, sentence. Yeah. And they reply with Vietnamese, you take that transferred into English. You just try to get the meaning, you know. Yeah, the best all. you can. Yeah, if you face to face, wow, that is body language. Yeah, and they even have the <laughs> the button you push and you speak in English and it'll speak uh, Spanish, Spanish or, or Chinese or whatever. Or whatever you need. language yeah. you want. The last question is why we don't pick one place to stay? Uh, I think because uh, we would be bored out of our minds. <laughs> I, definitely, I am. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a big world out there. I mean, I get it. You know, some people just want to relax and sit in one place. They want to have their local bar. They want to have nowhere they shop. They they want to have everything figured out and have no complications in their life. Mm -hmm. But I get bored with that. I need chaos in my life. I need I need to see new places and learn new things and and find out how some countries are the same or different from other countries. Yes. And that's why I'm a slow traveler. And I think that's why Chung is still slow traveling with because me. Because I want to eat all the food in all the country, <laughs> what is their local dishes, what is that, how they make it, you know. Yeah. It's very interesting to eat the different culture and different kind of the food. So we find places that we really fall in love with. But for us to fall in love with a place, we can stay maybe two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. But eventually, our feet start getting itchy. <laughs> we start having to move around. Yes. So that's so. that's why we don't settle in one place. But are you happy with this? I am. <laughs> I'm very happy with this. I say I would say from time to time we'll get aggravated, and we just know, hey, that's a, we need to slow down a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need to start staying. Well, maybe we'll stay in each place for a month for a couple of times, and then eventually we'll be like, ah, oh, let's speed up. I don't like this place so much. So <laughs> it's all about adjustment and finding what you're all about. Yeah. So that's all the questions, and thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you so much for your support to our channel. And in case you're one of the other 50 or 60,000 people that watch Cheng's videos but haven't subscribed yet, please <laughs> click that subscribe button. And ring the bell. <laughs> yeah, ring the uh, bell so you'll know when she puts up new videos. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.